Leon is going to be showing us BASO4, a uh, framework for data analysis, a plugin for IDA. So, warm round of applause, please. All right. How is everyone doing? It's cold out. Um, does anyone want me to do the other talk instead? I can do the black hat talk now. All right. Damn you guys. Okay, so this is uh, BASO4, uh, barium sulfate. Does anyone know what barium sulfate is? Hands up. It's, uh, no. Yeah, that's it. So it's, uh, it's, it's radio, it, it shows up in the pictures when they take x-rays. So they give it to you either as an enema or, or you take it uh, through the mouth. And then you get that. So that's a cat with a barium enema. Uh, it shows what problems are like inside with the intestines or, or leaks or any bad things. So uh, there's a little bit of a of a metaphor there. Can anyone guess? All right. So <clears throat> I'm Dion. I write programs for a living. I'm a programmer. I don't really do this hacking stuff uh, for money yet. And I write a lot of code. So I kind of get ideas about how uh, think how the code will be organized in the commercial programs that I look at. And one thing that I'm always really looking for are, are new tools to understand the, those programs better because uh, C++ is really a pain in the ass to, to reverse. I don't know if anyone else realizes that. Um, static tools are, are just not, not good enough right now. We need dynamic tools to, to help us out. And uh, <laughs> this is a work in progress tool. I submitted it as a work in progress talk. Uh, the tool's not done. I, I'll show you what I have so far, and it's really a collection of tools, so I'm going to release, release the code after the presentation, and you guys can play with it and send me bug reports or feature requests or, hey, you're an idiot. Um, the number one thing is uh, finding bugs is awesome. I have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, I don't know why you're here or why you do it, but that's sort of the focus of the talk and the focus of the tool helping you understand the code to be able to find bugs and find logic errors. Uh, yeah. So here, here's how I go about finding bugs. I go and read the PDF specification, and I say, hey, wow, this little bit here is uh, probably never used by anyone outside of Adobe, and anyone that generates PDFs isn't generating them with anything but the Adobe tool for this little tiny section of the, of the PDF. And I say, you know, I, I bet they made a few errors in the parsing of this or in the handling of, of how they're going to display this. So that's step one uh, and step two. And then early on in my career, I, I would fuzz. So I, after that, I just you know throw things at it, uh, find a sample PDF that had that, uh, and just mutate it until bad things happen. But what I learned after about you know four or five months of doing this is all your fuzzers suck. They're going to go into one area. Um, you're going to try and make them better. You, you might try and do some, even, even with some feedback fuzzing, you're not going to hit the corners and you're not going to be able to do the thing that a human could do looking at the code. I think we, we can agree on that. So what's a better way to go about it? You want to audit the code that actually processes this, these wacky formats that they have. You know, I'm picking on PDF, but obviously that's not the only thing. There's a lot of file formats uh, that get parsed. And so the goal here is to, to be able to reverse the code enough that you can, you can actually audit that, the bits that you're interested in without having to audit the entire uh, big application because that's a lot. So we have stuff that, you know, it's easy to find the, the specification most of the time. Or you can go, if, it, if it's not open, you can probably find it online. Someone's probably already reversed uh, the, on the wire format, right? Not all the time, but if, if, if they haven't, then that's not something I'm really interested in. Um, and then finding the dirty corners. Well, uh, I don't know if anyone's seen bl my blog entry or has been in the business for more than a year, but uh, differential reversing, where you, you run multiple, uh, multiple inputs through a program and look at the coverage, and then you can diff, diff the coverage and find out what, uh, what the difference in the inputs were on the, uh, on the coverage. So, so finding places in the program that process just you know, the, the part of the format you're interested in. Uh, people have been doing this for a long time. so. Uh, Pedro Amini is always uh, yelling that, that his, his uh, process stalker has done this forever with the PyMe, and his is really fast. And then the guys at Dynamics do this now. Uh, they just had a blog post. Uh, they have some stuff to do it. 
And then number three is what we're going to talk about today, trying to find the code and understand it so we can audit it with some meaning. So the goal. I want a tool to tell me what part of the program processes what part of the input. And I want to understand it not just on the byte level, but more on the, the logical level. So if I'm parsing HTML, I want to know that, OK, where, who processes the blink tag? Because I want to kill that. Right? So, so we want to go there, pro f find out which part of the, the binary actually processes the blink tag, which one uh, parses it, which one uses that parsed data that, that gets put somewhere, some logical abstract syntax tree. Uh, who uses that later to, to display it? Um, yeah. And here's the, the screenshot of the tool so far. So this is, uh, this is Ida, if you haven't seen Ida before. And uh, on the right side is uh, the current version of, of the way it's displayed. So that's sort of like an abstraction syntax tree. Um, and what this is showing is, is part of um, Adobe Flash Player parsing the AMF format, which is the serialization over the wire format for remoting stuff that they do. Uh, it's a good subformat to play with because it, it's, it's specified in the document and uh, it's easy to find. So yeah, th that's, that's sort of what we'll see at the end today and that's, that's where we're headed. And this isn't a new concept. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not representing it as such. Uh, I just haven't seen anything public that actually does it. Um, Peter Banya has the spider pig uh, that does very similar stuff, but as far as I know, that's not public. Um, he released a demo and a paper, a really long, really in-depth paper about how he goes about doing the, the taint tracing, the taint propagation, which is data flow analysis, which we'll get to. Um, but I, I don't, I'm pretty sure the code's not available. So what is BASF for? It's really a collection of tools. We have a fine-grained execution trace collector, which is a bunch of words. It just means record everything that you see that happens. Um, we also have this control dependence analysis, which is a static analysis to find the basic blocks that determine, uh, well, well, we'll get to it. Um, and then three is taint propagation analysis. So taint propagation analysis is just finding, uh, tracking you know, the input through the program, how it moves and where it gets stored along the way. And that's what we're going to use to, to color, our, uh, color our executable, those two, two and three together. And then four is the IDA plugin, which is just uh, taking the, that taint information that we've captured in two and three and making it available to the, to the auditor. Um, so now we're going to, I mean, the whole thing is basically just a demo. Um, we'll go to the slides back and forth between the demo and the slides so we can talk about stuff. But I'm just going to walk through the current use of the tool because uh, that's really easy. Any questions so far? I haven't really said all that much, but all right. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at this. Well, actually, let, let's talk about the first part, the execution trace. So what I call the execution trace capture tool is voidness. Um, it, you feed it a command line, uh, the address of the start function, so which module you want to start tracing, and the offset into that module and a watch point set, which is optional. But uh, you can, this allows you to extend your trace. So you can say, uh, every time I hit this line, I want to capture these variables, uh, or, or you know, this memory, or this register, and you know, this much memory. And at the end, we're going to have this trace that we can use for post-processing. Uh, some tools will actually, so some tools will do the taint analysis, like uh, taint check, for example, which is something out of, um, I guess, Berkeley with Thong Song. Um, Taint check does it all uh, in process. So it, it uses a, a dynamic binary instrumentation to do the taint propagation while the program's running. Uh, th they have to do it that way because the, the goal of taint check was to, uh, was to stop badness. So you know, if someone's trying to use a tainted value for, as a function pointer, it, it, would, it would nuke it. But for us, we're going to take a whole trace first, and then we're going to post-process that. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to debug and reproduce your results, and there's a lot of good things that, that you get out of just post-processing and trace. So um, trace collection. You want to execute the program and record process state after each executed instruction. So you want to record everything you can to be able to completely replay the program. Uh, that includes you know, registers, um, debugging events like uh, exceptions, and 
um, 